seven. We got one more picture back uh, for today's favorite images, and that's a picture that David has posted on our little group here. And there is a, a small text on top of it, just saying "cylinder." David, please tell us w what what you see in this picture. Sir. One of the reasons uh, I sent this to you, uh, TJ, is because it's unequivocally non-practical. As you know, most of the images that I look for exhibit non-practical qualities. In other words, qualities that are geometric and intentional. Uh, and this is very hard to argue with as being a rock because it represents a perfect cylinder that has either a bar or a, a sheet of metal coming off to the left side. And to its right side, there's something that's a bit more equivocal, uh, but there's a circle, some kind of dished out circle. and. Uh, it's really hard to say what this is. I found it in the 1264 front has cam, uh, and that surprised me because usually you don't find a whole lot with the has cams, and, or they've been redacted already by NASA. If you you know you know how they do with their images, but this was just sitting there as clear as a bell, a cylinder with something coming out of it, and uh, there's no way in my mind that you can argue this is a rock. It's completely non-practical. So that's why I sent it. Hmm. It's a really nice picture. I would like to hear what Neville has to say. I'm actually trying to pull it up from the original image to find out whereabouts it is, really. Um, but, but to me, it, lo it looks strange. It looks, it looks like something round, but it also looks as if there's something square coming off it as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying... Oh, there, I found it. Right. Um, if you actually look at the whole... The whole lot... Um, yeah, yeah, it's something round, but out the middle of it, there's something sticking out of the middle of it. Like, um, something square coming out the middle, you know? Yeah. Like It almost square, looks like an old... Square uh, and flat. Like, like what you would use in a garden, you know, the old rollers for flattening the ground, you know, where you would hold yeah. the handle. It's like a wheelbarrow and you have a roller in front and yeah. you use it to flatten the earth. That's kind of what it reminded me of. I, I doubt that's what it is, but it seems very strange. Uh, that thing coming out of it looks like it's going into almost the exact center as if it Oops. were yeah. uh, a, a spindle or an axle of some kind and that that cylinder is meant to turn, but that's, that's just conjecture. Yeah, but if it actually look at the stuff next to it as well, in the raw image, it looks as if it's one part of a whole thing, you know? If it's not ju it's not just on its own, it looks as if um, everything... You've got your round bit there, then you've got another another roundish bit that's covered over by sand or something like that. You can see a curve, but it looks as if it's all joined together, but it's being covered I, yeah. over, you know? I agree. I, you know, it, it, to me, it seems like a machine remnant. Uh, yeah. Everything yeah. about yeah. it is saying a formed, intelligently designed tool or machine of some kind. Mm. Roughly, it, it, it reminds me of a uh, ignition switch where you put in the key and turn over <laughs> and the engine starts, you know. Uh -huh. That's a big switch. Yeah. <laughs> but who knows uh, how it is on Mars. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mm. Martina, what are your thoughts on this one? <laughs> well, it's hopeless asking me about anything mechanical anyway. I mean, this is very, very masculine stuff, isn't it? Um, I mean, all that's jumping out at me, David, is this thing that looks like a nut on the right-hand side. It's got angles on it. You know, so I was thinking like a nut and bolt going into there. Do you have any idea of size? Can you estimate the size of the overall uh, thing? I don't have the original in front of me. But if memory Just serves, guess. I think Neva's looking at it. I would call the cylinder as being about a foot to a foot and a half oh, long. That's yeah, it's so so it, it's it's it looks huge. like a piece of machinery to me. 
some yeah. some heavy metal machinery. I, I, so, I would sorry to interrupt, but what I would like to hear uh, Neville's uh, uh, bit on, on the size on it. Yeah, a meter, probably a meter and a half in front of the rover. Um, roughly about thirty inches or something big. Right. About that big, yeah. It looks mm -hmm. it looks bigger to you then. Uh, me okay. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was being very conservative. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it looks about 30 inches, that that section, the round bit, but with all of it, all of it, all together, I would say it's around about a metre in length, you know? Yep, yeah. I'm busy trying to enhance it at the minute, but, you know, carry on talking. <laughs> <laughs> Martina, you were saying about it before yeah. I interrupted you? I, I just don't have the, you know, the... Um, <laughs> the technical know-how to be able to recognize heavy metal machinery but I mean that that's what it says to me that it's part of a piece of metallic equipment of some sort um, as I say the one thing that is jumping out at me is this sort of one two three four five hexagonal shape on the right hand side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I had found on another Hascam shot a perfect machine hex nut. It was a perfect hex nut, but a large one, maybe eight inches across, yeah, such was... as you would use to anchor a lamp post or a very large yeah. machine. Yeah. And I was very surprised that they had left that in the image because it was right next to the rope. And right. uh, and frankly, I was surprised that they left this in the image because it was recognizable enough and close enough. It, yeah. But See, here's my theory, and, and maybe I'm way off on this, but I think that they have artificial intelligence software examine all the downloads and do an obfuscation program, and then it goes to an operator for final redaction. And yeah. then it's dumbed down, it's reduced in resolution and put on the server. Uh, but I think that things escape them mm. periodically. I think yes. that happens uh, sometimes. Hey, what, what I've done is I've just sent you... The enhanced version of the whole lot, the round um, cylinder, and the bit that's in front of it. And on the bit that's in front of it, there's a square bit that there's a square hole cut out of something that's come down from this, and there's something sticking out out of it as well. So it looks on the left bit, side. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm, yeah. Oh, I, oh my goodness! Yes. Now there's a there's a rivet or something there. Mm. Yeah. Oh gosh, that's clear. Yeah. Wow. Mm. But also, uh, as, as David uh, actually went into here, uh, I, I wonder about uh, with all these millions of dollars it costs to, to send the rover up there uh, and use the latest technologies, we we get a picture like that one that's actually blurred a lot, and, uh, but you can still see something in it. If there was nothing in it uh, for us to see, why couldn't we just get a clear picture when 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 well, we know the yeah, cameras uh, right. have the capacity uh, to well you know they're not going to send crappy cameras up on a rover they're going to spend as much money as it takes to get the best images they can yeah. and yet so the pictures course, yeah. we get back are no better than a walmart disposable no. camera no. Exactly. you know they're exactly. cr really junk they're really junk mm. and it's amazing we can find what we find and that's why i think uh for example you're using some of the orbiter Images. Yeah. I think you got a chance to get a much clearer image, and of course, Nev working with the PDSs, you're getting a, a very, very clear image mm. there. But but here's so. a, a little thing about the orbit image because I, I tried once, I found something uh, on the original PIA image, and I went in to get the JP2 image of the same area uh, of this yeah. uh, anomaly, and this anomaly was simply not present. On the JP2, you could find it on on, on, on the website on the PIA yeah. image. You could find it on the the um, uh, large file on on the Arizona State University page where you also download the JP2. But when you downloaded the JP2, it was not there. No, the JP the, the JP2 images you can tell there's been a lot of tone taken out, highlight tone and dark tones and it just looks basically flat you know what I mean it does it just looks flat you know what you've really got to do is you've got to try and put them tones back in you've got to um, re 
really en- enhance it up again um, just by basically putting back the light tones and the dark tones, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but, but this just tells us that something is uh, going on for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, behind yeah. the walls and... and as I said before, with all those millions spent on equipment, uh, I still find it uh, <laughs> weird that we get these blurred uh, pictures out instead of just showing us the clean one that shows us that there is nothing to come here for. So why doesn't we just get the clear pictures so we could be assured that there was nothing to see? Well, the clear but pictures will be the the original EDRs. Mm. The, the EDR images that come back, which nobody ever sees by them. Oh, that would be. Yeah, I'm convinced that uh, I, I remember seeing a picture from uh, JPL where one of the image specialists was working on, on three screens, and they had rover pictures up, and they were crystal clear. Uh, and the sky, of course, was bright blue, and this was long before they confessed that the sky I, was I blue. I remember <laughs> like, that one. Yes. Yeah, yes. it was like, come on, fellas, mm. <laughs> you know, here, you, here you're showing on us in a picture and you're saying, oh, the sky's red. And all those videos uh, they have from from up there also, we know that taking video each day from up there, and we see a new video on NASA's uh, homepage maybe every second week or something. Yeah. Well, and that's another thing. You, you can't tell me that they don't have video capabilities on those rovers and sound recording capabilities. They've got to have the, and yet, I'm not aware of. Are you aware of files that you can download that show video or sound? Yeah, yeah, there are videos, and uh, I've seen uh, a few videos. No, uh, video. Uh, the, the well, video I've seen where they compi- uh, yeah compiled That's images, a series of images to create a video. Yeah, yeah, the videos are just the images put put together. The yeah. mass can mass take fifteen um, images a second. So that it's not really video qu- 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 quality, no, but no. it's um, it's near enough there, like you know. Mm. It's yeah. a bit um, like that. That do you remember? I think it was Spirit, maybe in Spirit, where you you on YouTube you can see it moving in the wind. I think Brian's put that little video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say it's several. It's several of these images just put together. It's quite clumsy, isn't it? Mm. It gives you the idea of, of, of how it looks when it's moving in the breeze, anyway. Yeah, I think, what he's do- I think what he's done there is just put m- mass cam right and mass cam left images together, you know, because the right and the left oh. are, are, are slightly, um, you know? Add, I yeah. get so upset because like my expertise cut. is in 3D processing. And early on in the mission, they put same sized right and left image pictures up on the server but yeah. very soon after that they would uh, use a 40 millimeter lens for the left and the big lens for the uh, for the right yeah. and so you had this little thumbnail long skinny thumbnail for yeah. one picture and a nice big square for the other and it's almost yeah. impossible to get the resolution you need from the small picture to make a, yeah, a, yeah. a good 3d image and it was like they just shot us all in the foot <laughs> Well, anyway, so they, they've degraded the 3D imagery from the mass cam, which is very sad. Uh, but even so, the 3D images that I've been able to process have debunked a lot of anomalies. I think you'll recall one thing that it was like a cylindrical robotic thing that was climbing a cliff. <coughs> I forget which soul it was. But in 3D, you can clearly see that the object is beyond the cliff and is has been masked by the cliff. And very often, things that in 2D look very much like an anomaly, when you get the parallax and you can see it in 3D, you realize, oh, no, that's just a rock behind the other one yeah. making it look that mm. way. Uh, and so the 3D is, is frustrating for me because I'm relegated pretty much to the uh, nav camps and as camps, and even that quality is pretty marginal. Uh, yeah. Nevertheless, there are some things that are revealed that uh, are, are, are rather startling. Uh, mm with the 3D, but the problem is very few people would care to learn the, to see 3D with free fusion, mm. and so it has a very, very limited appeal. Uh, nevertheless, it's something I pursue, because I, I know sooner or later I'm going to find something that's uh, going to blow things off the map. I just mm. keep at it. 
I hope you all uh, will continue your search for, for finding anomalies on Mars and in Moon and space. And we are gonna end for now. Uh, that was uh, David's uh, great picture of the sun that we were discussing here. And I want to say thank you a million times to David and to Neville and to Martini for taking part in this episode on, on favorite images. And you can follow us all on the, the UFAH page on Facebook. We will leave a link to it in the video description to this one here. And Thank you guys for, for being here today and giving us your thoughts uh, on all these uh, objects uh, and, and pictures. Uh, that was great having you here. Likewise, you so great to see you all. And until we see us again out there, take care. Bye. 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 <laughs>